All right, welcome back now. The federal government expressed its anger over a plan by the United Kingdom to offer asylum to persecuted in court are members of the indigenous people of Biafra, Ipor, and the movement for the actualization of the sovereign state of Biafra, Masab. A Minister of Information and Culture, Alai Mohammed, stated that the plan was disrespectful to Nigeria as a nation. However, social political groups like the Middle Belt Forum, the Ohanese and Dibo, Afeniferi and the Pan Niger Delta Forum is supporting the asylum offered by the UK. Now joining us to discuss this is Aloy Ejimako, a council for the indigenous people of Biafra IPOB, and of course Honorable Chukunonye Okereke, a public affairs analyst. We'll start with you, uh, Barrister Aloy Ejimako. Let me just get your candid opinion concerning this issue of uh, offering asylum to IPOB, in as much as the IPOB members have come out to say that um, asylum is not what they seek exactly. Uh. Is it to me? Yes, to you. Go ahead. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, well, yeah. Okay. By way of introduction, my name is Aloy Ejimako, special counsel to the indigenous people of Biafra. Okay. And Mazin Nandekan is frame leader. Anyway, um, your question on the asylum policy of the UK government uh, okay. is very topical. Um, I see uh, the new policy as a dramatic shift from what it was in 1967, uh, back in the day when the initial uh, steps were taken to uh, form the Republic of Biafra. The policy of the British at that time, uh, if you go into the archives, uh, was dramatically different from what it is today as represented by this uh, uh, recent asylum or recently uh, released asylum document. So uh, to that extent, it's a dramatic uh, shift uh, with dramatic uh, diplomatic uh, um, uh, event, which I believe uh, generally goes to um, lending credibility and legitimacy uh, to the struggle for the restoration of Biafra. See, we're talking about um, an IPOB here that the Nigerian government declared a terrorist organization in 2017. And here you have uh, a foreign government, uh, a world power, a nation that is very friendly to Nigeria and the former colonial uh, uh, power in Nigeria taking a, a diametrically opposite uh, position. If IPOB is indeed a terrorist organization, uh, terrorists are never considered for asylum. They are they are rather considered for arrest. Uh, UK has a zero tolerance policy for terrorism. So the way I see it is that. This thing goes beyond the mere uh, issue of granting asylum to IPOB members to recognition of uh, or diplomatic recognition of the legitimacy of their position on restoration of Biafra through a referendum. Okay, well, let me let me let me even butt in here now, Barrister Ejimako. You know, you know the issue of a referendum rights now. You know, in, invariably you're saying that the United Kingdom has recognized IPOB in as much as uh, the federal government has labeled uh, that particular group uh, terrorist now. So specifically, referendum uh, to stay in Nigeria or not to stay in Nigeria, just in in specific terms, what exactly does the IPOB want? The IPOB declared from the outset, through the very mouth of its frame leader, Mazin de Kano, that it simply wants uh, the federal government to uh, succumb to its request to conduct referendum, peaceful referendum, to find out whether the peoples of the former Republic of Biafra still wish to continue to be Nigerians. That is simple. And it is saying that a referendum is not a call for war. The referendum is a legitimate uh, tool, is a legitimate mechanism 
for determination of important political questions, you know, such as, you know, partition of a nation or such like. It was used before in Nigeria, back in 1963, uh, the three federating regions in Nigeria resorted to the use of referendum to, to create a fourth uh, federating uh, region, then called Midwest. So that one they called it plebiscite, but it's the same thing. It's a word of art, you know, and it was used by the departing British and the French to determine the status of the former southern Cameroon that used to be part of Nigeria. It was a referendum that carved that part of Nigeria into Cameroon and then carved the former Sadana province of northern Cameroon into Nigeria. So it's not an illegal or an illegitimate uh, political phenomenon. It's legal, it's historical, and IPOB is saying um, the way uh, uh, Nigeria is, it's not very comfortable uh, for the former uh, people, for peoples of the former Biafra. So let us use this method to determine whether they wish to continue to be Nigerians or they want to pull out. That is all. All right. So basically, right now, the UK, uh, in its wisdom, is uh, granting asylum. And most of the times, asylums are granted to, you know, people who are often, uh, who feel or are often, uh, you know, persecuted in their own uh, land. Yes. Would you say that for the IPOB in the, uh, in the face of, uh, you know, seeming uh, marginalization or claims by that particular uh, group? Well, yes, I have reviewed the document upon which the U.S. policy is based. It was quite exhaustive, uh, scholarly, and it exhibited a very deep understanding of the Nigerian Biafran conundrum. You see, the basis for grand asylum is when someone can, you know, show that he has well-founded fear of persecution or that he possesses a political opinion that his home government is seeking to punish by means of punish, some punishment of some sort. Oh. So in this very instance of the IPOB, IPOB or the British government has recognized that IPOB members in fact do possess a political opinion that the Nigerian government is seeking to punish by means of punishment of some sort. And that political opinion is simply that they want to pull out all right. of the Federation of Nigeria. In the wake of all of this, Cohen, uh, so going forward, uh, what do we see uh, or do, are we going to hear from the IPOB uh, group uh, anytime soon? Well, anyway, first of all, I, on behalf of my clients, I wish to express my profound gratitude uh, to the British authorities for recognizing that my clients do possess a political opinion uh, that qualifies them to uh, seek for political asylum in the UK on the basis of persecution in Nigeria. Because, because I have a first-hand experience. I defended a lot of them in court in Nigeria here. But do you know that since 2015, when IPOB members began to be arrested, none of them has been convicted of any criminal offense to, up to this date. Not of terrorism, not of anything, not of secession. Secession is not even an offense. I don't know what they are charging them for. So, I mean, uh, people are not. Uh, silly that seeing through the whole thing that it is not prosecution but it is persecution all right thank you so and, much yeah thank you all right, thank you so much. That was a lawyer, a Jamaica Council for the Indigenous uh, People of Biafra. Uh, something the federal government say, uh, said uh, just yesterday, against the backdrop of the fact that IPOB is not only prescribed, but also designated as a terrorist organization here in Nigeria. It says uh, the UK's decision is disrespectful of Nigeria as a nation. Uh, it went on to say that the decision amounts to sabotage in the fight against terrorism and generally undermining Nigeria's security. Uh, Mohammed also said it is not only unconscionable, it is inexplicable. All right, we also have a public affairs um, analyst uh, joining us, uh, Chukunonye Okereke. Uh, good evening to you. 
Uh, Honorable Chukun on your KK Public Affairs Analyst, many thanks for joining us on Plus Politics. Thank you. All right, you have heard the position of the federal government uh, on this particular discourse. What are your thoughts exactly? The federal government is saying that it is disrespectful, that's the decision of the UK, and it also undermines uh, or sabotages uh, the fight against terrorism in Nigeria. Um, as a matter of fact, United Kingdom is a sovereign entity. They don't need to take permission from any country to do what they're supposed to do. They have their embassy in Nigeria here, and they have the high commission here, together with uh, M1, M15 and M16 members that are part of the British High Commission in Nigeria. They have taken their time. They have done due diligence in trying to understand the basics of why IPOP and MASO has uh, gone on uh, such secessionist uh, uh, stance. Uh, the 56 page document, which uh, is being housed, were housed in the Home Office, in United Kingdom, did a due diligence, understanding the very basic fact that uh, freedom of any particular group is a basic and fundamental human right. And uh, having understood the stance of uh, IPOB and MASOV, they decided that the toga of a terrorist organization that the federal government of Nigeria gave to IPOP definitely is a wrong move. What the federal government has succeeded in doing for IPOP is the internationalization of the issue of whatever they are agitating for. Okay. And now that he has gone to the level of uh, international community, the next thing is you see other countries around the world trying to identify with United Kingdom stance because they have allies. All right. As long as United Kingdom has taken that move, mm. America will start trying to look at it. The European right. Union will start looking at it. All right, Mr. Okereke, uh, another thing right now is that uh, IPOB, Masob, you know, in as much as they have uh, thanked the UK for you know, that particular grant, the asylum, they are, you know, saying that what they need is a, a referendum. So where do we strike a balance? Um, the very basic fact that they must be grateful to the United Kingdom for giving them this uh, particular global recognition of their struggle. And uh, for them, referendum, that's what they want. But the fact remains that uh, it is going to be very difficult for anybody to give referendum, considering the situation of Nigeria National Assembly. It is not even in our constitution. The amendment of the constitution has to factor in referendum in the first place for you to start talking about referendum. You cannot do nothing. You cannot do something on on nothing. So there is no basis for that. And until that becomes part of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, it is still going to be a far cry for them to actualize the referendum for now. So what they have succeeded in doing uh, over the couple of years that IPOB has existed in our consciousness is that the struggle has gotten international acclaim. Okay. Uh, just before we let you go, very quickly, I, do, I just want you to summarize, uh, you know, a school of thought that is actually trending on social media, you know, trying to compare, you know, the federal government's stand on uh, IPOP and MASOB, and of course, uh, granting uh, amnesty uh, to uh, terrorists and of course, um, banditry. What do you really make of it? It is very wrong. You cannot uh, use one particular cover to cover another part. Uh, the uh, the headsman issue that has been a, a terror in the country in the last couple of years mm. has already been uh, indexed as the fourth most dangerous terrorist organization in the world. It's no longer a local Nigerian politics now. The global community is involved. The global community is telling you by what they have done for IPOB and MASOB that they are not a terrorist organization. Now, they've already told you that uh, the headsmen are a terrorist organization, the fourth most deadly. So how can you rationalize giving amnesty to a, a group that the global community has already identified as a terror group? All right, thank you, sir. Whereas... 
All right, thank you so much. Uh, I'm afraid that thank as much as much. we can take uh, your thoughts have been uh, noted. And of course, uh, uh, indeed, uh, we trust that the federal government uh, is listening and should try to draw some conclusions from it. We do appreciate your time, Honorable Chukononye Okereke, Public Affairs Analyst. Thank you very much. All right, we'll take a short break now, and when we return, I'll be giving you my take on the attack on security formations. Stay with us. And here's my take. All hands must therefore now be on deck to check these ugly trends and to put the menace of attacks on formation at bay. Measures should manifest in the government and security agencies in the affected state open their ante in intelligence gathering and surveillance to enable the agencies proactively and reasonably predict potential crimes with near perfect accuracy uh, rather than being reactive. Now government should not only rely on engaging security agencies but must recognize the need to devote attention to security intelligence. And that's Plus Politics. I am Justin Kadenye. We return again 7 p.m. tomorrow. Bye for now.